All right, so in this video, we um, have a cup that is on a turntable with a with some liquid in it. And our goal here is to figure out how fast can we spin that cup without having the liquid spill over the edges. So when you spin a cup, it gets that uh, like tornado effect kind of which if you take like the cross section of it, like so like look down the side of it, it will um, more or less look like this. It'll look like a parabola and the water is obviously higher on the sides and depending on how much water and how fast you spin it, sometimes you can get the tornado effect all the way um, down to the bottom of the cup. But that, again, that depends on how much liquid you have in it. So we have um, this right here. So we have our um, H, we'll just call it H naught here. And then what is also gonna be important is our big H, which is gonna be the height of the cup. Because, so in this case, the height of the cup is actually important because that is our limit on how, high can this water actually go or any other liquid it doesn't have to be water um and then we can take this h and move it all the way across here and that will give us like our initial point here um and then this for this problem we go back to the um general equation of fluid statics which is pressure which is differential pressure is equal to um, the density times the acceleration. And so one important thing to know about the acceleration is that the acceleration is in terms of a perspective. So if you've ever been on one of those carnival rides where you like put your back up against the wall and you start spinning around and sometimes it'll angle up and down and whatnot, and it's really hard to like pick your legs off or like try to get off of the back. It's because the velocity of you, but in our case, the liquid is actually going outward. So this is the angle of our, or our, not the angle, the direction of our acceleration. It is going against the wall of the cup. And now, and that also means that the wall of the cup has an acceleration opposite of that, or else you would just like fly off into, like as it's rotating, you would just like fly off because the wall isn't pushing back against you. It's the same way why Earth is pushing back up against us. My marker's starting to run out here, so I apologize. But, and the acceleration of the wall here is towards the center of the cup. So like on this side, it'd be this way, and on this side, it'd be that way. So what we're actually trying to find here, like in terms of um, variable, we, so the cup is gonna be spinning like this, right? And that is spinning. And what we're actually trying to find is our angular velocity, which is going to be represented with this. And this A here, sorry that I switched colors, I got a new marker here, but um, this A here can actually be represented with the radius of our um, cup here times the angular velocity squared. And that's how we can find, we can use this to plug into our acceleration to find our angular velocity, which is um, how fast we can actually spin the uh, cup. All right, now we can um, plug in our uh, acceleration here. Um, and then we can um, also figure out what this should be. So this, let me talk about that first. Um, so this is just position, but 
in terms of how we want to calculate this, we actually want this to be um, radius. Because, what, so let's look over here. We have this uh, spot right here, which will be the um, lowest point of our uh, liquid. And then, so there's actually two parts to this pressure here. There's the horizontal pressure, and then also the vertical pressure. Um, and that's why we need R here, because we want every um, spot to have a pressure to that. So we're going to integrate both sides here. And um, I'm going to move. I'm going to plug in this for our acceleration, and I'm going to move R to this side at the same time because there's an R on this side. So we got the integral of our differential pressure is equal to our density and angular velocity are both going to be constants, so they're not in the integral times um, R and then dr. Um, so now for our balance of integration, um, this one's simply just going to be um, any radius um, at a, any known radius that we want to know what the pressure is at. And this one is going to be any, so P1 and R1 are going to be any R1 will be the radius that we know the pressure at. And so we're actually going to pick this point right here as our R1, which um, will actually be zero because it'd be right in the middle. But um, you'll see later as to why we do that. And also just to note that um, this, these are just um, variables of integration um, for this. So, before I go off and um, write the integral of this, um, I want to talk about the um, pressure. So we have, um, we can assume that this pressure up here is just all air. So we can also assume that all of the pressures on the surface are just going to be zero. Um, which um, you'll see here in a bit, makes things super nice when we integrate it. So when we integrate this side, we have P minus P1 is equal to rho um, angular velocity. And then because you still have an R in here, this will be um, times one half, and it'll be R minus R1 squared. And so earlier I said that we took the point at the lowest point of the water, um, being that would be our R1 and that would also be our P1. And so our R1 is going to be zero because like I said earlier, it's right in the center. So radius is zero. And it's also at the surface. And like I just said, the pressure will also be zero at the uh, surface which makes things look a lot nicer here. So let me rewrite this. We'll have P equal to rho angular velocity times one half, and then it'll just be R squared. All right, so we have our um, pressure with um, respect to our radius. So now what we can do is we can actually go over to let's just say this spot right here. And obviously it's not on the surface, but now, so this is our pressure um, horizontally, or no, it's just our pressure with respect to our radius. And then we also have a pressure with respect to our height. And because they're at the same point, so we'll call this H, Um, because they're at the same point, they will have the same pressure. And so our, um, remember our general 
um, equation for pressure is um, rho acceleration to gravity h. And then we can set this equal to um, this equation here because they will have the pressure should be the same in the same spot, whether you take it with respect to the radius or with respect to the, um, the height or the depth. We'll, we'll call this um, going down will be positive um, just to not get any weird signs or anything and um, H. So then what we want to do is we can solve for our H. So H is going to be equal to, we can move everything over to one side, but the densities cancel. So we'll have an angular velocity squared times R squared over two times acceleration of gravity. And um, this will be important to us because if you notice, so we have our H naught here, which is our initial height of our fluid. And then we start spinning it. And what actually happens is this, this H is not that. This is just a random point I picked. Um, what happens is um, we have this depression here that the in the middle here, it actually goes down. Whereas on the sides, it goes higher, but the, the middle, it actually um, goes down in height. So we can use that to help us here. So one um, important point here that needs to be made before we um, get into some stuff is that these the liquid in the volume, assuming you haven't uh, lost any yet, because that's our goal to spin it without uh, losing any liquid, um, is actually that the volumes are going to be exactly equal. So notice that this doesn't change at all. These two um, portions of the liquid are both going to be the same. But this spot right here, all of this liquid is all of this liquid right here. So the volumes of these two spots will be equal to each other. And that will help us um, here. And so we have our, the radius of our cup. I'm gonna go with how we have big H. Um, we're just gonna call this big R. And so we have the volume of this area. Um, th this dashed line is the lowest point. And um, so our volume of this area right here, so um, I'll just say uh, V1 here. So we'll have this one and then this will be two. So V1 here is going to be equal to our pi big R squared times our D. And the reason it's times our D is because um, that's essentially the height of the uh, amount of liquid that we want to find. So this is the volume of this spot right here. Now this part is a little bit um, more confusing to get into, which we, we will do that here in a bit. And now for um, finding the volume of this one. So we have to take a different approach. So pretend this is a top down view on the uh, cup with water in it. And so we have, it'll, it'll be kind of similar to how we had the strips last time, but it'll be um, instead of a change in the height in the last video, how we had a change in the height, this one will be a change radially. So it'll be um, circular strips all the way around. And um, so we have this um, differential area. This will be our um, differential area, which will be two pi r, and then that's our circumference multiplied by dr. 
and then to get our volume, we just simply want to multiply by um, the height. So we can just type eight or put H here, and this is a differential change in the volume, not a constant volume like we had here. Um, and now to um, integrate both sides, we actually want to plug in this for our um, H. So I'm going to do that. And so obviously 2 pi will be a constant. Um, our 2, our acceleration to our gravity, and our angular velocity will also all be constants. So you have integration of, I'm going to move this towards the center. So I have room over here. So we have integration of dv, oh, I'll call it dv2 because that's what I started naming it. Um, 2 pi. And then we pull out our angular velocity over 2 times acceleration of gravity. And then we have the integral of, it'll be r cubed in here times dr. <clears throat> now let's talk about our um, bounds of integration here. So our bounds of integration are going to be our um, radial positions. So the first one will be zero, and then the next one will be our uh, maximum uh, radius, which will be big R. And so I'm actually gonna erase this side here, because it's not that important, and we can set this equal to this, because remember here, we said that this area volume is equal to um, this area. So we have our pi big R squared D. And then we can start canceling stuff. This two and this two cancel. This pi and this pi cancel. And so I'm going to rewrite this as big R squared equal times D. Angular velocity over G. And then r cubed dr. <clears throat> All right, so now we can go ahead and integrate this. So we don't have to worry about the zero because it's zero. And then um, when we plug in this r and then we integrate, it'll be r to the fourth over uh, four. So we got, um, I'll just show it here. We got r squared d is equal to angular velocity squared over g g times r to the fourth over four and then this becomes r squared because it cancels with that one and then this is our expression for our depression here which will be um, big r squared times the angular velocity over four G. All right, so now if there's one thing that we haven't really accounted for yet, and that is um, an expression for the um, total height. So we have an H here, which represents um, the, it is the changing height at a given radius. But if we go all the way out to our big R, so if we go all the way out, to the very edge of the cup. Our H will actually be all the way at the top of our cup. And the only and our H only measures down to the lowest point here. So now we need to find out a, an expression for what the um, height is here. So we have our H naught. To find the height of this section right here, we can do our H naught minus our depression. Pretty simple. And that will give us um, the height here in this section that is uh, equivalent on both sides. And then for the next part, we can simply just add um, 
it will be the it will be this expression here but this r will be a big r so we'll have um angular velocity squared big r squared over 2g <clears throat> and this is equal to our big h um, I actually should have did this in the last step, but we can plug in our um, depression here. So we have our H is equal to H naught minus um, angular velocity squared R squared over 4G. And then we got plus angular velocity squared R squared over 2G. And so notice that this and this are, um, the only difference is this um, coefficient here in front of the g. And so this is equivalent to a positive one half, and this is equivalent to a negative one fourth. So when you um, uh, add them together, you get, I'm actually also going to move this uh, h naught over, but when you add them together, you get positive one fourth. So we got h minus h naught equal to our angular velocity squared, big R squared, over 4G. And now, um, we're essentially done. We just have to solve for our um, angular velocity here. So we have our angular velocity. We can move everything to um, this side. So it'll be a square root of, it'll be a 4G, um, times a h minus h naught over r squared. And then to make it look a little bit nicer, you can take the 4 and the r squared out. So um, we got 2 and then times the square root of g times h minus h naught. Um, this is all over big R. So this is our um, expression right here for um, the angular velocity, or like how fast you can spin the cup. Um, and um, you, you can figure this out by using this expression here with the height of the cup and then H naught will be um, the height of your liquid. So like how much can you actually fill the cup up? And R will be the radius of your cup and that will give you how fast you can spin the cup without the water or any other liquid tipping over the edge of the, uh, the cup. <clears throat>